Uh, I've been setting up for a video, as you can see behind me. Um, I'm just going to keep talking. Oh, for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention, a kingdom for a stage, princess to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. How do I sound? No sound. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Okay, where was I? Uh, then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the port of Mars. Um. And at his heels, at least in like hound, should famine, sword, and fire <sighs> crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles, all the flat, unraised spirits. How do I sound? And I could be louder. Okay. Okay. Let me. Ah! Okay. <sighs> Setting up things all. Let me turn my own mic up. But pardon, gentles all, the flat, unraised spirits that have dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an object. Uh, you can probably hear the seven train running by. I live in Queens, New York, right by um, a subway and above. Yeah. So, you might know, hear that while we stream. So... Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? Or may we cram within this wooden O, a very cast to affright the air at Agincourt? <sighs> oh, pardon. Since a crooked figure may... I can't read the whole script and, like, set up for the game of time. Anyway, I'm gonna drop it. Um, yada, yada, yada. Kindly to judge our play. And you can't hear the train. Lovely, lovely. So, uh, this is Age of Empires 2, uh, Definitive Edition. It's a remastered version of a game that first came out in, I want to say, 1999 by Ensemble Studios, like from Microsoft. Um, it is a classic real-time strategy game. I have sunk thousands upon thousands of hours into my life. And as it turns out, there are custom campaigns for various um, parts of the world. So some in the Americas, some in Asia, Europe, Western Europe, Eastern Europe. We have all three Europes. I, um, Goliath, I don't really have a main sim. I usually just like play random and just see what I roll with. Um, I don't do multiplayer, honestly. I play this mostly to get through the campaigns. Thank you. You're very kind, Morgan. But anyway, there is a campaign, which is for some reason on the African sub uh, thing, but that is nothing. There is a campaign that is nothing but historical battles. As you can see, I've played them all and gotten just at least bronze on them. One I have not played in this version, but I've um, played many times in the original, is the scenario around the Battle of Agincourt, which is, of course, the battle which formed the basis of William Shakespeare's Henry V. Historically, the battle took place um, on today, on this day in history, October the 25th, 1415, the Feast of St. Crispian, who is the patron saint of shoemakers. And it was a big old, like, war epic. It's one of the history plays. Um, it's part of the Henry ad. I've done a video on the Laurence Olivier version. Um, and on the Kenneth Branagh version, when I did my retrospective on all of Branagh's Shakespeare films. Um, I think the Animorphs went there. Like, like that book series from the 90s, there was a time travel um, book where the Animorphs went back in time to fight in the Battle of Agincourt. Weird childhood. Anyway, let's start. The rain 
mountains come again until there is nothing left of road, wood, or field, nothing in the entire world but mud. The exhausted English soldiers hoist their longbows over their heads, trying to protect the precious yew wood from the water. The empty wagons can scarcely roll forward, even though all the supplies have long been eaten. Terrifying hoofbeats resound from the rear. The French knights have come. The English have been in a slow retreat ever since the debacle at Harfleur, where King Henry V's glorious siege dragged on and on, costing the lives of three. Yes, uh, David Haddad is right in the chat. Uh, Mechamorphs three. Now. Henry has um, all but abandoned his dream of establishing his hereditary claim to the French crown. I've actually sunk a lot of hours into Age of Empires 3 lately. Calais and the ships that will return them home to England. But on the road back to Calais, the French army overtakes Henry, knowing that the English are fatigued, starving, and outnumbered 3 to 1. The French have no interest in negotiation. The English make their stand on a wooded hilltop. The archers plant stakes in the ground to offer some barrier against the deadly French cavalry. Look, he in the chat is right. Uh, Age of Empires 3 is, is very oddly specific. More nimble than the impetuous French knights, and only works and as like a specific model for colonization and not for the French forces are upon them. Yes, the Animorph who turns into a bear gets to eat Nazis. Okay, so now this scenario, I'm playing on hard, and there's no resource collection or... Actually, I should probably explain how the game works. Uh, it's a real-time strategy game uh, where you found a town center, you gather resources, and then use those resources to build up an army um, in this isometric view. So, um... <sighs> Two objectives, King Henry V must survive, King Henry V must return home to England. Basic summary of the whole play. I mean, the whole play, the action is Henry gets too far in over his head and decides to make a claim on his territories in France um, and start a needless war, or restart a needless war. but Or rather, a needless campaign in a long ongoing war but you know I played this many times the original uh, version as a kid it might have been one of the first uh, encounters I ever had with the Battle of Agincourt like as a concept because this game came out when I was like 12 or so but anyway let's start oh shit Okay, um, we're gonna lose a lot of guys at start. Okay, damn, damn, damn. Uh, okay. Whew. So, welcome to Age of Empires 2, the actual gameplay. Uh, we are playing as the Britons, specifically, um, Henry V. CF Kane is my, um, steam handle. And we're just fighting against nothing but other Frenchmen. So, we are fighting with the unique English longbow unit, which also formed a key part in the battle itself. Like, I think it, Henry actually mentions the good yeoman uh, in the whole Once More in the Breach speech. And so, in the context of the play, Once More Unto the Breach, uh, dear friends, once more, close the wall up with our English dead. Uh, happens like right before this we are going away from a hard floor we must make haste to a transport so that our king henry will once again see beloved england so who else in the chat has played age of empires 2 in any form because i see lequeus is a uh, talking about instant flashbacks yeah, the war started over tennis balls. According to the play. I mean, I was, it was probably just like a dramatic, like, invention of history, likely. But, um, 
It began with a diplomatic insult, so... I actually had the tennis ball speech memorized as an audition piece uh, back when I was in college. And then we have matched our rackets to these balls. We will in France, by God's grace, play a set, shall strike his father's crown into the hazard. Balls. Waiting for the chat line to catch up. Um, it is totally a groin shot joke. Thank you. Someone noticed it. But yeah, the the point of the insult being that um, Henry's still a kid. He's still a kid, you know, playing games. Thank you, chat, for saying these balls before I did. I was trying to be classy. This is why you do things with a chat, so... And pass blame. <laughs> I should probably mention, I wish I was being paid to do this, but um, I should probably mention that Age of Empires 4 is coming out within the next week, which I have not pre bought, and I'm not sure I, not sure if I am going to play it. Um, it's not like I need another time waster. But, so yeah, most of this, oh. Thank you. Thank you, voiceover. So what makes the Britons unique in gameplay is the unique unit, which has a range um, that's pretty much unmatched in the game. Uh, which is, which matched English history, um, the yeoman repeat in many battles, including this one. As the game's outro will play, should we actually win this thing, will tell us. Um, the archers were key in kicking down enemy cavalry, which had to charge up a muddy hill. So. Someone brought it up. The historically accurate sports car with guns from the cheat codes. Actually, can we cheat? I mean, I've never played this on this hard a difficulty, and I don't know if we'll actually need to cheat. You know? So, the thing is... Uh, so, my guys are killing villagers. Stop that. We don't need to... I mean, I guess we do need to if he wants to destroy the university, but here's the thing. I rewatched the Kenneth Branagh, um, and the villager goes down. The mechanics of real-time strategy games make it super easy to do war crimes. Unfortunately, because the units just go around hitting whatever is in sight. But then again, Shakespeare did include a whole thing, a whole scene, where Henry hangs his childhood friend Bardolph because he stole from the French. To essentially set an example for the other uh, soldiers, not to loot and pillage while they're there because they are there as soldiers, not as raiders. But the thing is, you have to do this in order to beat the game. The, actually, can you see the objectives? No, you can't. Let me fix that. There we go. The objectives in the game specify that you can get bonuses in, like, say, armor or technology or whatever if you destroy enemy things. So... Yeah, and and that scene happens after, you know, it happens after Henry threatens to put Harfleur's babies on pikes. So, it's a nuanced play. It can be done very differently, but that's part of why it's a good text. 
It is kind of like the Ur war movie. Okay, can my longwoman out range a castle? Yes, they can. Lovely. So that's cool. Thoughts on John Doyle? Um, what's the composer for Henry V, uh, the Brana version of Henry V, and also Thor, which Brana also directed, right? <laughs> Don't let war crimes stop you, just have to rock on. You... Stream, you should know better than that. Like, Henry V is a man-child, essentially, and the the first lines of the play start with that. It's it's a bunch of counts getting together and talking about how ill prepared they feel the king is because he spent most of his youth partying and not at study. Which the previous plays, and you know, Henry the Fourth, parts one and two, um. I'll talk about in depth. Like it's the dramatic crux of the play. Can Henry V grow up? John Doyle, the YouTuber. I do not know him. Um. Okay, we lost a battering ram, but we don't really need a battering ram to take this. Are they... Have you been firing at the wrong part of the... My longbowmen were taking out a section of wall and not the castle. And there's no way I could have known, because... Um, we may lose. Because I'm not sure if we needed the battering ram for anything else. <sighs> A lot of this game is just waiting for buildings to go down. I can't really cross this bridge until that castle goes down. Because castles have... A lot of damage. They deal a lot of damage to them. <sighs> Joel Edgerton's fall step in the king. I don't think I ever finished the king, to be perfectly honest. Hmm. Chat says I can possibly run past the castle. Well, possibly. Can we out? Nope. We're in range. We're in range. We're in range. Okay. Henry's getting hit. Oh, hey, cool. In this scenario, does the play take on the role of Henry, or does it more of a hand of God kind of be? Uh, to answer your question, yeah, Henry is right here. He is this unit. He has 18 attack. I guess plus 2 is the armor bonus. This is, I guess, pierce armor and slash armor. Different. Oh, damn. Infantry. Can we convert them, possibly? Nope. Dead before we convert them. Is the chat talking about Hamlet? A uh, different play. Cheeseburger Owl, we were talking about Animorphs before. Um, yeah, because the there's some plan where the Yurks use time travel to go back in time and change human history to make humans much more conquerable. And the first thing the guy does is travel back in time to the Battle of Agincourt to give the French the heads up on English whereabouts and have Henry lose the Battle of Agincourt because the guy that he assimilated, the human his human host, was an actor and wouldn't stop quoting Henry's goddamn speeches. Which I actually kind of like. Making a joke out of how everyone quotes this writer.
There are very few Shakespearean video games. Oh, so there's nothing... I gain nothing by looting them, then. Okay, so, actually... Hmm. I played this many times. Kyle, how do you recognize a fascist? Um... Usually if they start talking about the Great Replacement or something like that, if they start complaining about yes. foreigners or immigrants, that's my usual go-to. Anyone who talks about... <sighs> Anyone who puts their worldview on yes. strength. I suppose. But... The castle of Agincourt lies down this road. You will likely face many French knights. Fighting will be fierce. If we are marked to die, we are in now to do our country's loss and to live as you and men the greatest share of honor. Any more? Yes. Yes. It will have yes. Yes. I've never been sure. Is this accurate old English? Or I guess middle English? Yes. So much of RTSs is just listening to the same sound bites over and over again. This is, of course, a very popular play because a lot of English audiences just love seeing the Frenches have their asses handed to them. Today is St. Crispin's Day, and every year from now on, you will be able to show your scars and say that you were here with me on St. Crispin's Day. He today who sheds his blood with me shall be my brother. It will have... Paraphrasing a lot. Uh oh. Okay, moment of truth, moment of truth. Did we prepare? Can we just do this? Um. Okay, we. Wait, can we. Is this. Uh oh. Or wait. Uh. Hey, we did it! And all we needed to do was burn a university down. We needed to burn a university down so we could light our arrows on fire. He said the thing. Yeah, I think it was Orson Welles who said that nowadays we just watch Shakespeare to recognize the quotes. Which has always been true. And Henry is a very, very quotable play. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. The game's afoot. And we have matched our rackets to these balls. Your naked infants spitted upon pikes with their mad mothers, with their howls confused, do break the clouds. That is an actual line Shakespeare wrote. Shakespearean just means extra. We've accepted that now. Yeah. Nothing can replace... If we could capture the castle of Agincourt will hold little danger. Wait, are we just longbowmen now? Huh. Wait, stop. No, stop shooting the... Trebuchet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Uh. So if we're only Yeoman, if only Yeoman are left, I guess we've lost way more nobility than actual history did, because... Right about now in the play, Henry would be reading off the list of dead and just listing a lot of noblemen and then saying none else of name, which I talk about uh, in another video. I talked about that in the Laurence Olivier 
uh, review that I did. Does your priest have the upgrade to convert buildings? I, nope. I do not have that research. Yeah, uh, monks can't convert buildings unless they have a special research enabled. Success! We lost way more nobility. Eh, worst things could have happened. A lone trebuchet enclosed in its pasture. You know, room to graze. I mean, it's a trebuchet of food. They eat rocks. Uh, David Haddad in the chat. Yes, this is the Wololo game. Or rather, it's the sequel to um, the Wololo game. Because Wololo was spoken by priests in Age of Empires 1. But now when they convert units, there's this, like, choral chant or something like that. Well, everyone in the chat is talking about the ability to convert buildings. Now, unfortunately, I can't cheat in this game. Because a lot of the cheats... Well, one... One, a lot of the cheats um, are useless because we don't have settlers. Villagers. They're called villagers in this game. There's always a builder unit in these kind of games. We don't have any villagers, and we can't build any buildings, and we don't have a town center. And so many of the good cheats, like the one that summons the... Um, Car that shoots bullets. Uh, you need a town center for them to appear at. When I studied Henry V in college, our professor spent a lot of time talking about how the invasion was kind of unjustified and painted Henry as an imperialist asshole. Um, absolutely right. Absolutely right. In fact, um, according to... Uh, there's a book by James Shapiro called um, 1599, um, A Year in the Life of William Shakespeare. Um, very densely researched kind of retelling of what Shakespeare's life might have been like in the year 1599, given like the sociopolitical context of the times and what was going on in London at the time. And um, he, Henry V was first performed within that year, um, historically which I believe is around the same time that, um... Was it Francis Drake who invaded Ireland? Anyway, at, at this point, um... The English army was stepping up its military actions in Ireland. And so, doing this play, which is very critical about war and what you actually get from it. I mean, the play ends basically by undercutting the victories that we just saw. The chorus comes out um, after over after that whole speech about how great the object was. He mentions that after this, all of Henry's games in France would be lost because after this would come Joan of Arc and the rise of Burgundy and the expulsion of the English from the continent. So, yeah, it was either Raleigh or Essex, one of the two. Yeah, James Shapiro. James Shapiro is uh, the William Shakespeare scholar. He also wrote um, Contested Will, which is my main source for the video I did about Anonymous all those years back. Oh, Drake absolutely did stuff. Sir Francis Drake, not the Canadian singer. Um, I can't remember exactly what he did in the Caribbean, but it was something. Anyway, I didn't do research on him because 
<sighs> this is honestly a, re a really chill scenario because all you have to do is just sit back, fire some arrows in the air, and just because you outrange everything, there's just no harm. Ugh. This was the height of gaming in 2002? No, 2000. Because Age of Empires 2 came out in 99, I want to say. Or. And this is from the first expansion that's since been. Updated to include all kinds of content, including and up to content made this year. Uh, low IQ nationalist, why do you keep asking about the spoony one? <laughs> I met him once. I don't know. This was a few years before World of Warcraft. When Warcraft as a franchise focused mainly on the RPG elements and not the RTS elements, but yeah. Um, Uh-oh. They're knights. And I've aggravated them. Fuck. Fuck. Shit. Doogie. Doogie. I don't know why you're watching iCarly. I don't know why it recommends iCarly. That's on you. Oh, we survived that. That's good. Yay. Arrows out, Ranger Horse. Kind of zen. Actually, you know, I just had a thought. According to the objectives, only Henry needs to go on the ship. Only Henry. And I can just have him... Okay, so scenario will end once Henry gets to England, which is over here. Which means there is no gameplay this I don't have to take anyone with me I can just go to the transport ship it will become mine and it will easily get out of range of the tower while you guys just you know The game encourages you to just ignore the rest of your army and focus on the king and getting him to this little pen. We won Shakespeare! Cool. Are you suggesting that the king's life is more important than his subjects? Yes, and the play goes out of the way to really dispute that. Eh. The Battle of Agincourt is remembered not because it was an inevitable triumph, but because, but because it was an upset. Outnumbered English but because a guy wrote were good speeches for it. Over French knights, only because the knights had to charge up a muddy hill through a dense forest. The English oh, the, the speech helped. And were yeah. able to catch the encumbered French in the middle of their retreat. A charge by Henry and his surviving cavalry pushed aside the beaten French and opened the road to the coast. Despite his victory, Henry did not follow through on his attack, but withdrew to England. The true winner of the battle was Burgundy, which was able to come to power in a vacuum emptied by both the English and the French. 
neither the French nor the English really won. And it's just remembered through kind of a recursive central speech. We in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few. There's nothing particularly interesting militarily about what happened, but it's about how we tell it. There's all kinds of things I could have done. I could have invaded Amiens and burned that down to get more stuff, but eh. <sighs> so that is a video's game. Yeah, I thought that'd be just a fun thing to do. Uh, really quick thing. Really quick scenario. I mean, there are other scenarios, and that was on hard difficulty too, wasn't it? Yeah, I got the gold for that. And, yeah. I thought that would be tougher. Henry's such a wimp. He really is. <sighs> yeah, I want to drink instead of be king. Hey now, rich assholes choking on mud is always interesting. That's true. Well, classism. <laughs> I've seen speedruns of that. Actually, we have some time. That's not quite speedrunning. Speedrunning would be this. Okay, so we only need to get Henry. We only need to get Henry to the boat, right? So, just keep him moving. We don't need to worry about any other units, just follow this one unit. Okay, I can outrun the castle. I can outrun the castle. Alright, alright. Knock, 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 knock. Damn it. Someone coming to attack me. Yeah, there we go. Okay, he's opened the, opened the thing for me. Stop talking over me, narration. Okay, um... This next part is going to be a lot harder. Especially because I was pretty sure I could outrun this guy. Um. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Using the royal we, undoubtedly. Um. Between uh, Brana, Olivia, and the Hall of Crown? It's a pretty good question. Uh oh. Oh, uh, it's. I. I can answer this. I can answer this and stay alive at the same time. Um, I, I prefer I prefer Brana, uh, mostly because I grew up with it. It's I th more militarily interesting and more like thematically. Ow! Mm. Henry has fallen. We have failed our king. We shall pay our slaughter. Well, I didn't know how I expected that to go. <laughs> Um, we were marked to die that time. Okay, let's try that again. Now that we've done a straight playthrough. I mean, we've only been going for like 40 minutes. I've seen streams go a little bit longer than that, but... Hmm. I have an idea. First, let's get to a safe place. Away from towers. Oh, damn, damn. That's a... Okay, we lost our battering ram. Damn, we lost both our battering rams. And, okay, we're doing much worse this time. Uh... The good news is, we still have our monks, which is going to be, the monks are going to be the key to how I end this. So, someone from the north is here. 
I apologize for that accent. Although there is a point in Henry V um, where Shakespeare literally writes an Englishman, a Scotsman, a Welshman, and an Irishman walking into a paddle together and talking about how the battle's going. Just working as like a commoner chorus to comment on the action. Which is kind of like how every war movie works now. Or it has worked in the past. Like, there's always some guy from Brooklyn, some guy from the South, some guy from Detroit, some a Californian and all that. So anyway, let's cheat. Let's see if I remember these 20-year-old cheats. Yes! Lumberjack. Okay. Is that enough to... Wait. Oh, no. They patched it out. Oh, no. That's worse. My plan was... Have the villager build a town center. So we could have, like, cheat units spawn from the town center. But the villager cannot build anything except palisade walls. Ugh. Clever bastards anticipated our cheating. Yeah. Well, I mean, they've had literal decades to work on, you know, patching this game. Shakespeare did not invent the Irishman, a Welshman, an Englishman, a Scotsman walk into a bar joke. But that kind of, like, you know, narcissism of minor differences is what Freud called it. That's been an, a British thing for forever. And I guess if you're telling a story about war, it makes sense to, to have that kind of representation, to like represent the nation in miniature throughout through, a, through minor characters to show all the kinds of people that would be fighting in this war. Like Saving Private Ryan... Um, even something a little more fantastical like the Dirty Dozen does that too. Like, I don't know. Um, now let's see if this works without a town center, because I don't think I've actually tried that. Wait. No. What's the cheat? I typed in Furious the Monkey Boy. How do you turn this on? Nothing. The game recognized it as a cheat, but it does not work without a town center. Now we know. Well, um... Okay, this workaround is going to work. Let's try this again. But better this time. We're going back to running. I'm going to stay zoomed out so I can maneuver better. 
so that our King Henry will once again see beloved England. Okay, knock knock. Between these cliffs in the walls of Boyen. However, Boyen. Let me in. Let me in. We can recover something from the Speaking Europeans. of the Eric Andre show, mention them in the chat. Uh, um, yeah, I think I'm just doing the exact same thing that I did before, only I think I lost even more hit points at the castle. Uh, the castle of Agincourt lies down this road. We will likely face many French knights. Fighting them fierce. If we are marked to die, we are... enough to do our country loss and to and live to fewer men the greater share of honor. I've heard literal babies do this speech. You're not impressing me. Mythology was the one with the Canadian bear. Fuck! I outmaneuvered him. Briefly. 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 Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh sh- King Henry has fallen. Nope. Ugh. You know what? The siege of our is lost. We've already won this. Why do we? <laughs> Why am I still doing this? Actually, you know what? I know how to end the stream. Design defeated. I don't care. I already won. <sighs> Anyway, I'm going to just start a random game. <laughs> now. All right, childhood, come back to me. <sighs> and that's the real victory, isn't it? Part of the thing about history plays is that in doing them over and over again, you can, like, revisit memories, and part of it is, you know, propaganda. Part of it is <sighs> coming to terms with the past. But anyway, thank you for stopping by on this stream. It's been fun, and... Yeah. Death to fascism.